Good morning, Groovers. I'm up before Sparrow Fart because we're off to go and have a look at the next Bayswater railway station shutdown. Um, if you followed my previous uh, videos, four of them or five, I can't remember, it was a while ago, um, I covered the shutdown where they did the track realignment for the new station and some of the engineering involved in achieving that. Well, the viaduct for the Allenbrook line, the one that goes to the northeast of Perth, um, is very close to completion. Um, and it's come time that they need to realign the tracks again um, and open platform three and four at the new Bayswater station. Well, actually, probably only platform four because I think platform three will be on Allenbrook. An Allenbrook down, down station, I think, down platform. Um, and um, I just want to go and have a look. So um, they've uh, built walls around a lot of this to try and uh, mitigate the noise the trains make for the local residents. Um, there's a bunch of, uh, what do you call it, landscape gardening, trees and things. Actually really quite good near where the bus interchange will be. Um, because, you know, if you're going to have a railway station, you should also have a bus interchange. Uh, and probably a, um, a kiss and ride as well. Um, so let's all go and have a look at that. Well, me, go and have a look at it for you. Um, and see what we've got. Well, here we are back in the studio. If you are one of the people that live east of Perth, uh, you're probably uh, experiencing a little bit of inconvenience because the Midland and High Wycombe lines have been shut down for some work. This happened on the 29th of March and it's running till the 7th of April, which is today. Um, so the trains will run from about 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. So the work has to be, well, some of the work has to be done by then. Um, if you've been following this on my channel, you'll know that uh, almost exactly a year ago, from the 1st of April to the 29th of April, there was a major shutdown and track realignment at the Bayswater station. The Bayswater, if you're unaware, the Bayswater station is having a massive upgrade because it's going to be a junction of three lines. Um, and I covered that in a series of four videos week by week as that shutdown progressed. If you're um, interested in that, click on the lady here and um, you'll go to that video series. In fact, I think what I'll do is I'll bundle all these Bayswater Station videos in one series. So um, basically what needs to happen is the outside track uh, the northern to the Northern Island platform is the downline to Midland. That needs to be open by 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. And from the top of my ladder that I took with me to like peek over the sound barrier wall so I could see what was happening, um, that looks pretty good. Looks like it's pretty close to being ready to go. This morning was like 6.30 when I was out there. And while there's still work to be done on the project, like loads of work to be done on the project actually, it looks like they're going to be able to open tomorrow morning without any problems. Um, unless something happens today while I'm making the video that like stops that. So what they've had to do is realign the Midland down track. Um, for the last 12 months, they've been using the southern platform of the new station for both the up and down lines to Midland. And that's not how it's going to be when it's finished. The um, the southern platform will be the uplines to Perth from Midland and Allenbrook and High Wycombe. And the northern platform, I think if I've got this right, will be the downlines from Perth to those places. So there needs to be some realignment to the two lines between the platforms. And it looks like work will continue on that over the next few days, maybe weeks. But the main thing is that the the tracks on the outside of both islands will be serviceable today. So as I hinted, I took a ladder with me so I could take photographs over the sound barriers that are built to keep the sounds of trains away from people. Sadly, it hides the trains. Like, who doesn't want to look at trains? Um, but now you can't hear them or see them, which, like, probably is a reasonable thing. Um, they, have, they have done so much work here. So firstly, let's go back a year ago and look east from the Hotham Street Bridge. And here's a few images showing how this has all changed over the last 12 months.
Here are some other images from around the job. So one of the interesting things about this is the massive viaduct that goes from the centre lines of the Bayswater station, curving north um, to dive under the western lane of the Tonkin Highway to rise between the two lanes of the Tonkin Highway and head to Allenbrook. Um, this is really cool. They've constructed this by uh, putting some piers in the ground, putting either capitals or beams on top of them and then putting preformed beams on top of that, dropping panels between the beams and then filling in between that with reinforced concrete uh, via a pump truck. I have seen pump trucks operating all over this job, but two days ago when I was down there, I saw the Mielses Putzmeister 70, which is the biggest pump truck outside China as far as I can tell, I did some Googling. Um, it has a 70 meter reach, um, which is quite incredible when you think about it. If you put it in the middle of a football stadium, as in like round football, football, uh, it could probably just about reach the edges of the grandstands if it wasn't too big a stadium, which is quite crazy to think about. Um, so here's some, here's some footage I took just to give you some idea of that. And here you can see them using the, the pump truck. Basically the guy on the left, he's uh, got a radio controlled unit um, which is controlling the, the boom on the pump truck and the guy holding the tube is directing the concrete. The other three guys there have long vibrators on flexible lines. Don't giggle. Um, and that gets all the bubbles out of the concrete. The last thing you want is voids in your concrete. So it has to be vibrated. And the noise you can sort of hear in the background is actually the vibration. So from looking over the top of the barrier, this is how I think the track layout will be. Um, basically, there's like an interchange running between all the lines uh, where they can lay up uh, emus uh, or reverse direction. So if they needed to do another shutdown, they could run trains as far as Bayswater and back into town and the replacement buses would only have to go east of Bayswater. Um, and they could also park track maintenance machinery here. It's about halfway between Midland and Perth. So that's sort of like a useful space to have some storage layup sightings. Um, and then there's a pair of points and it looks like there's going to be some crossovers after those points where just to give some flexibility in, in how the network is used. Uh, this, this bit hasn't been finished yet um, and, but it doesn't matter because it's not going to be needed for tomorrow's opening. Anyway, thanks for watching this. Um, please uh, drop over and check out my Party Meeple channel where my next video is actually going to be about train games. So if you're watching this, I'm assuming you're interested in railways and trains. Uh, so why not drop over there, hit me with a sub, and in about a week or two, you should see a video where I talk about some train games.